Now with this we can test to see how it's going to look like our selection. So let's run the scene and because that is running above this is what is going to look like our selection. So now that it is working all right, let's go to our player interface script and let's add now all the objects. And something I'm going to do is make the camera go inside of the player interface and the visible units 3D, which is that blue square we just made, is going to follow the camera. So let's place it right here. So now the camera is a child of the player interface and the visible unit area, which is this guy, is, belongs to the camera as well. Let me just place above ground. There we go. So let's save our scene and now let's enter the player interface script. So the player camera is an old 3D and is this guy right here. We can drag and drop, it's going to create the code for us. And the area is about the same, it's an area 3D, which is going to be this guy. Okay, next. Our UI select rectangle is a nine patch node. So let's define their type and drag here the nine patch. Now, let me just rename this to something else like UI drag box. Let's control Z that out and drag and drop a UI drop. Now we are have the nodes we want. Let's create here. A new function, I'm going to call this initialize interface. So here we're going to give some stuff. For instance, we want the UI drag box to start always hidden. So UI select rectangle visible equals false. And we're going to call this when we start it. So you can copy this on the ready. So what is going to happen? is when we run our scene, we are not going to see any longer this node right here. So we can press F6 to run the current scene. And you can see the drag box disappeared. All right. And now let's start to code our area 3D. So the first thing we are going to need is some variables here. So I'm going to call this variables. This variable is going to be keep a list of all the units that enter the area 3D. So let's call it box selection um, units visible. There we go. So this is going to be a dictionary. So any units that enter the area 3D, you are going to add to the dictionary. And we can do this by connecting the signals. So let's create now some functions here. First one is going to be when the unit enters to be visible on the screen. So let's call this unit entered. And this is going to return nothing, void. And also we're going to need unit exit. Unit exit it. Let's type in void and pass. So now what we are going to do is go under ready here and let's connect the signal. And actually you can use the initialize interface code here instead of the ready. So let's access our player camera visible units area 3D. Let's get its signal. So first let's see which signals this node has. For you to do this, you can click on the type of the object with the control. You can access some information about that in the Godot built-in documentation. So this is the, the documentation for the Area 3D. And let's go right here to the signals. Let's find the signal body entered. So we want to connect this signal to know what units are inside of our camera. What units are visible to our camera. So body entered is the signal we want and it passes an argument which is a node 3D. So we can do here a body entered and we are going to connect that signal to our function unit entered. Now we don't need to specify anything else. 
we are going to pass that argument along. However, it's going to give an error because here it doesn't have an argument. So let's give here the argument. And because we did this, the argument pass is going to be catched by this variable here, by that argument. So now we can say if box selection has or unit yeah let's do something here first so how are you going to detect each unit we are going to need an id so a unique identifier and godot has this because all instances have a a id number so let's create a temporary var for this function and let's call this unit id so the unit id is going to be an, in, an integer and it's going to be get instance id now where does this function came from you can press ctrl left click on it and you can see the functions right here it returns an integer so it returns the object unique instance id so this is exactly what we want so as long as you are inheriting from an object you don't need to call anything else and because we are extending a node 2d node 2d extends from the object and object has that function which you just saw which was get instance id which is this guy so back on our script we can get the instance id of our unit node so let's type here unit dot get instance id so if our box selection list have the unit id we want and because this is a dictionary we want its keys so this is how we're going to structure the dictionary so let me just give an example here we are going to structure the dictionary so it's going to be the unit id and it's going to tell us which is the unit node so this is how we are going to work so by typing keys we are going to list an array of keys of the dictionary. So this now is the documentation for the dictionary. So you can type, you can see all the methods here, that you have an option to call keys. And this returns the list of keys on the dictionary. And on the dictionary, keys are the first values it, they have. So this is going to return a list of all units ID. And we're going to say if that array from the dictionary has our unit id then we can skip it why skip it because if a unit entered our area 3d and we already have it for some reason then we're going to skip the function however if we don't have it so if this is not true we don't need even to type else here we just can continue the code we are going to append that. So our box selection unit, dictionary, and now we are going to create this type of structure here, which we want. So we're going to type in, in brackets, our unit ID, and we're going to say it's equal to the unit that entered our screen, but we want its parent. So why am I doing this? let's create a basic unit thing so let's go here to our 3d screen and let's create a new scene so let's, let's minimize this i'm going to add a new scene and you can add it through here where you can click on the plus here and it's going to be a 3d scene and this is going to be a test unit so it doesn't matter what it is and let's add here yeah, I can actually just drag our GLTF test unit. Yep, and as you can see, we're going to use this as our test unit. So I just going to press, if you press on the new pad, the, the new pad numbers are keys just like Blender. So you can throw the camera around. And I'm going to just place it above the, yeah, so yeah, you just leave it like that. So it's above ground. So this is just the graphic of our units. So let's just call this so we know what it is. The graphics. So unit graphics. 
So the idea is that this unit will also have a, let's give it, let's actually see because I don't remember what is the name of it. So on our 3D nodes here, let's get a collision object and we can select a few here. And I think I'm going to use the character body on this case because it's a movable object. For structures, we can use the static. So this is going to need a collision shape. So let's add a collision shape. It's just a test. So let's add here a box. And I'm going to say that the box is up here. And the box shape just something like this so it's just uh, so this is just the shape of it so let's save this save scene as enter scene and let's give it test units so now we just create a new scene with all the all those elements ready to go so if we drag and drop a test unit it's going to add here our test unit so let me delete the test unit from previous and the building as well don't need that ugly building <laughs> to stand looking at us so let's place this right here and the idea is when a physical object collides with the blue box of the camera is going to be inside of the units to be selected by the drag box so Let's go here, and this I think should already work. We already connected the signal, so let us just replicate some function here. We are also going to use an argument of the node here because I want to connect. It's almost something like this. It's body exit, I believe. So let's double check here, and I can explain for you as well. So on the signals, you, all, you have bot enter and you also have bot exit. But it's emitted when the bot exit is the area. So when that happens, we are going to say that the unit is no longer visible on the screen when the unit gets out of the bl blue box. So let's go here. And let me update the signal. Body exit. And the unit let's keep here unit exit this is just a prefix name so let's go here and say let's copy this and now we're going to say if our box selection unit does not have so first we're going to grab their keys if it doesn't have our unit ID, so if the unit exited the area, there are blue blocks, but for some reason is not inside the list, and then we don't need to do anything else. So we're just going to skip the function. However, if we still have that unit inside of it, then we're going to delete it. So box selection unit with that unit ID, it's going, oh, actually, I'm going to use erase here. And the key is asking for a key. So if you remember, keys are the first set of values from the dictionary. So I'm going to give the key as the unit ID. So using this and this, I think we already can see it. Now I'm going just to print something here so we can see what is happening. So let's print unit entered. And we are going to place a comma here. And the unit that entered is the unit. So it's going to say which unit entered the area 3D. And we are going to say ID. And let's place here the unit ID. And it's unit, uh, unit node, which is like the parent. It's going to be the unit get parent. Okay. So let's copy this print statement here to here. And we're going to say unit exit. 
and it's going to say everything here as well. So with this connected, let's run our scene. And we should be able to see here unit entry and it's going to be it's going to say what type of unit it was. It was a character body 3D. Which if you go to the test unit, it's right here. So it's going to say that the node object. So which unit it was, and we are asking for the node, it was test unit. So if we move our camera now, and once it exits, we should be able to see another message here. Unit exit, and here's the unit. And I'm going to call just a new function here, just for us to see. And I'm going to say it, debug units visible. And all this is going to do is going to print our array here. So we're going to know how things are. And we're going to call this function just as a test after our print yeah. statement. So if we run our scene now, you can see that it's going to print the array. 